Hello and welcome to that 90s wrestling podcast and today joined once again by my good friend Renee Dupree. Renee, uh, we've been making some headlines lately. Yeah, not a lot of people Jesus. are happy with us. <laughs> I didn't plan on this. Oh no, uh, like some I people... was just looking for some beer money, that's all. Well yeah, <laughs> like all of us. But no, like, so obviously we had a great interview and it's doing really well and a lot of interesting topics came up from our interview. Uh, one of the topics we spoke about was uh, Bill Goldberg, and uh, you know uh, he was quite unsafe with you back in the day. And obviously, he's made his recent return to WWE, and he's been thrown into the title picture. And a lot of people's in agreement with us with what we said. Uh, a lot of people's always agreed that he was very unsafe in the ring, and at his age, he shouldn't be in the world title picture at the minute. But one guy who did disagree with us was uh, Booker T, and I suppose it was someone. I never mentioned in that previous interview, but at Booker T, what was your relationship with him like back in the day? I always liked Book. Hmm. I never had a problem with him. No. Yeah. Listen, man, when you ask me these questions, right? It's just a little side hustle I did. Everybody mess uh, messages me to do these podcasts. So what the hell? I'll just do a little side business when I'm not doing my real job. Yeah. Which by the way is uh running a multi-million dollar real estate business that my family owns. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Booker's just defending his friend, but uh, no, let's listen to this and have some fun with it. Re you remember, you remember Rene Dupree? Yeah, heck yeah. Rene Dupree gave an interview recently to um, a podcast. I think uh, it's called That '90s Wrestling Podcast, and on it, he had some comments about Goldberg. And I just wanted to read them to you, and and I don't know if you've heard these yet, but let me just read you the quote real quick, and I want to get your feedback on what he said. Um, this is him talking about working with Goldberg uh, during his time there in WWE. He said, Goldberg dislocated his collarbone. Uh, La Resistance had a pre-tape in the back wait, with wait, Goldberg. Wait Goldberg dislocated his collarbone? Uh, uh, Rene Dupree's Okay. Collarbone. Right. Rene Dupree's collarbone, excuse me, pronouns, pal. Um, had had a pre, we had a pre-tape in the back with Goldberg, and he hit me with the French flag, and we had to do it five takes. To this day, if I try to flex, it still hurts. Yeah, he's the s's s h i t s. Uh, he's horrible. Many wrestlers will tell you that. Uh, to me, WWE must be desperate. That's the only thing I can figure. They can't create new stars or they don't have confidence in the people that they have. That's from Rene Dupree, who spent, I don't know, a few years with with uh, with the Six. company. What do you think about all Six. that? What do you think about his comments? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know what, man? I, I hate even, you know, commenting on, 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 on stories like that because I try to stay out of the, the middle of, of, you know, sometimes just personal beef. Uh, yeah. Apparently he got in a fight because Batista was banging John Morrison's girlfriend. You know, jealousies, you know, you know, because I always say if I was a- Did he just say professional jealousy? Uh, he did so. Okay, okay. Um, I haven't watched WWF programming in over 15 years. Okay. As far as a professor, my home is in Japan. You know, I'm going crazy not being able. I just can't wait till their borders are open. I've had a good career over there for 14 years. Any one of the guys in the locker room, and and I saw Goldberg, you know, coming in and getting the push, and um, next thing you know, he's freaking a, a millionaire, and um, he's the hottest thing on television on on late night talk shows and all this kind of stuff. Man, I'd be so envious, man. I'd want to be him, all right? I would want to be him. I would want to be that guy. Knowing that he, you know, hadn't put in the time that I have. But the one thing that I'm not going to do is, um, is hate on the guy. I all right, we did this podcast. You gave me random names, right? And I gave you a That's random right. answer. Yep. You asked me about the gentleman, and I told you the only story I had. And That's it was right. 18 years ago, right? And the reason I bring it up is because it still me up. Yeah. Like I can't lift dumbbells in the gym. I can't press dumbbells because I have so much pain in the shoulder from 18 years ago. 
the reason I got through it was because two weeks after, and don't forget, after that, I'm still on a full-time schedule. So I had to get a cortisone shot to get rid of the pain, right? Because it's separated. Well, anybody who knows anything about cortisone shots knows that it does more harm than good long-term. It's actually really right. bad for you. So yeah, that's, listen, I had no, I don't follow the internet wrestling community. I had no idea that there's this big thing against Goldberg now. I had no idea. <laughs> I don't follow it. Like I told you, I got a business to run. So yeah. you asked me a question, I gave you the, the only story I had about the guy. He fucked me up. Jesus. Because like I say, I wish I would have got, you know, uh, put in that position when I was coming up and got it, you know, eat, you know, I wouldn't say given to me, but, you know, placed in a position where all I had to do was grab it. Um, man, I would have loved that. You know, and then when I hear people like, Rene Dupree, who had an opportunity, man. This guy had opportunities just like everybody else. And, and I'm sure he wishes that the company would bring him back at the age. Okay, book. since you're not in the know, I was re-signed with the WWF in 2011. Okay? Vince McMahon himself personally called me when I was living in Tokyo. All right? I signed a five-year deal. Okay, uh, but because I was living in Tokyo, I had actually gotten kicked out of the United States. And in order to get it back into the United States, I had to fill out a waiver to get clearance to get back in. All right, because they, they accused me of being there illegally, which whatever, no. I moved back to Canada and I actually had zero interest on going back to the United States, but they offered me a, a contract that was worth five times more than what I had originally signed. All right. So that's the truth. Angle with one of these young guys and pay him a, a nice check for it. Send him, you know, I I, I would imagine so. Okay, okay. Um, I could be wrong. Okay, I could be wrong. But when I hear that kind of talk like that, as far as he he broke my he broke my sh you know shoulder or whatever. Collarbone. Collarbone. Booker. The last time I wrestled you was in France. Do you remember that? And you remember you put me in a hammer lock with this exact shoulder? And I yelled at you and I was like, dude, take it easy, take it easy. Why? Because it still fucks me up. That collarbone thing was back then. And say, bro, what the hell are you doing? Bro, you about to hurt me. You know, hit me like that one more time and, and see what happened. We're gonna be in a fight. Okay, I'm just saying. How old was I when that happened? 19. Exactly. Yeah, he was I'm a, a young boy. Yeah, you shut up and do as you're told, and take the ass kicking. That's right. You mentioned right. that in our last chat, Renee. You said that the unwritten rule, and I would imagine, especially for a kid as you were, you're not allowed to open your mouth for the first six months. Was that right? Exactly. Because everybody there to this day is still walks on eggshells when they first get there. They can't feel comfortable unless they've earned it. They walk on eggshells and they're five years into the business. Exactly. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, okay. I would be talking 15 years later about how bad it hurt. <laughs> okay. Hurt? How bad it still hurts. Okay. Unlike you, Book, and unlike Goldberg, who just does this as a part-time side hustle, this is my full-time job when there's not a pandemic going on. So I still have to do this. And I still love it. And having this up anyway keep going you know had to come come uh confront with each other about um something like that happening and and i just hate to hear uh you know people talk like that uh you know he's bringing he's coming back and it's it, wwe is desperate you know and like i say I'm bill goldberg is what in this business okay is what we we call an attraction okay when the promotion business goes down they bring in attractions to help boost business, okay? Yep. Like my father, for example, in his territory. When business went down, he would bring in the midgets and the girls, okay? Because it was an attraction that would draw money. Understand? Another thing yeah. they would do to draw money is they would hotshot the territory. Uh, red means green. You know what that means? Yeah. Yep. Or they bring in a... Red means green is when you get some fucking color. You get some blood. Right. Okay. That's when you hot shot the business. Okay. He's an yeah. attraction. Okay. Yeah.
Um, but unfortunately, in my opinion, as a wrestler and being in this business for 20, going on 24 years, uh, the attraction is worn out. That's just yeah, what because another thing uh, WWE does as well, and it always gets brought up when ratings is low, which they currently are, they always seem to do like a Legends Night, for example, or Old School Raw, and they bring in a lot of the old timers. So that's it. Bang on the money, what you're saying, but we'll play some more. Person in that spot where, you know, still the company will be desperate, but he was the guy, you know, in that spot. And it just, I don't know, it's wrong um, in, in a lot of ways as well, because. You know, Rene Dupree was, you know, he, he was on a, a trajectory where he was going to do pretty good. And I can't remember what what happened. I think it was um, not having a drink, you know, with somebody. What happened, Book, is I asked for my release in 2007 after Chris Benoit killed his family. You remember Chris Benoit, right? You remember the best of seven series you had in WCW with him, Book? That was the re that, that was the, the series that helped make you a single star. Keep going. Oh uh, yeah. You know when you're not when you don't have a drink with, with people in the company, it, it, you know things can go wrong. Uh, remember, Al didn't Alex Riley say something? <laughs> you know, I think I mean? so. Yeah. What happened was everybody we were in Italy. Everybody went out to the bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know where I went? To the gym. Worked out. Went to my room and called my mother. Why did I call my mommy? Because she was going through a chemotherapy for breast cancer. And talking with her was more important than going heels and baby faces out to a bar at the time we're wrestling in. That's what happened with um, Rene Dupree. And, and then again, I don't know, he, you know, he wasn't the greatest worker in the world, but he looked good. Um, he had um, something that the company could use um, back then. But when I hear a guy like that, disparage a guy like Goldberg and call him the crap. Uh, it's the same guy that, you know, I, like I say, I hate talking about stuff like this, but when you put yourself out there, I got, I got to, you know, Goldberg's a friend of mine. Um, so, sure. so I'm, I'm going to defend him on this. Um, Rene Dupree, he's a guy that's, you know, I've always been fun of Rene Dupree as well. But when I hear him talk like this, this many years later, I'm, I'm very surprised because this is the same guy, Bob Holly beat up. I'm talking about not just, I mean, I wouldn't even call it beaten up. It was just assaulted. Um, and he didn't even try to fight back. Beat him through the locker room, all the way out the back door, out of the building. That's right, Book. At 20 years old, when I'm feeding you for a comeback, and the mother hits me in the eye to where I can't see, and then hits me in the back of the head with a steel chair when I don't know it's coming, and kicked in the head 10 times, I might be a little knocked out. For sakes, keep going. Never tried once to fight back. This is the same guy. I remember he started he, we were going overseas, and you know he bought a nice suit and he had some nice shoes. Um, and he was like, "Book, check my suit out." I said, like, "Bro, you looking real good." Uh, by the by by the end of that tour, he looked like he had you know been to Iraq and back. Um, I'm talking about on a tour of duty. Um, they, <laughs> he came in one night from 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 his match to take a shower and he realized he was taking a shower with his suit that was glued next to him. No, but they shoved my uh, $500 shoes and nearly a thousand dollar suit and ruined it in the shower because I didn't go out drinking at a bar the night before because nobody invited me. Again, I was talking with my mom. Uh, What really, what, that, that, that's just materialistic shit. You can replace that. That doesn't bother me. What really bothered me is when in Italy the next night, they took my French flag, my heritage, they shoved it in the toilet and pissed and shit all over it. Wow. Okay. Okay. I don't know what bullshit world you live in, but in my world, that's called racial discrimination. All right. That was really hurtful. His, his shoes were in the shower as well, and they were filled with water. Um, and, 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 and I don't remember him saying, man, you know, I'm, who did this? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fight some. No, what I did do is I went to Arn Anderson, who was the agent, and I asked him, you know, see up here in Canada for my dad, that bullshit didn't happen. No. No, no he wouldn't tolerate that shit. Uh, 
So Arne's advice to me was, don't sell it. It's like, okay. And the next person I went to was the undertaker. And I said, what do you do when someone does this? You go, well, you find out who does it. He ordered them to do that. Wow. Because I didn't go out drinking with him and the guys at a bar. Keep going. Oh, mind you, I'm, I'm only 20 years old. So legally in the United States, I'm not old enough to drink. Yeah. And I don't like touching alcohol because there's alcoholics in my family. And later on, my addictions actually caught up with me. Hmm. And I was trying to stay away from that stuff back then. Keep going. What happened to me on, on a tour? Somebody would have been in a fight. I don't care who it was. I would have picked a fight with somebody who I just thought it was. I would have got fired um, on that tour. Would have got you just said it. You would have gotten fired. Yeah. I didn't want to get fired. I was taking exactly. it like, okay, they're ribbing me. I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to show them it doesn't bother me. That, you know, shouldn't go. Um, I, this is the same guy that I remember they took his computer bag and ribbed him, and he never got it back, his computer bag. I never had a computer bag. Never bought a computer on the road. It was a supplement bag. Right. I had all my amino acids because I'm big into fitness. So my amino yeah. acids, my testosterone boosters, my multivitamins, protein bars. It was probably two or three hundred dollars worth of shit that they stole. Again, I didn't sell it. No. I was told to, you know, by who? By the guy who trained us in OVW, Dr. Tom Pritchard. If you get ribbed, you don't sell it. Listen to this come from someone that, you know, I don't like I said, some some people should just lay out when it comes to making comments like that. Um, because he, it's like, I'm like a lawyer. When you open, you open the door, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, walk right in, right there. Anything he, you can, you say can and will be used against you. Exactly, <laughs> so he opened the door on this one right here. I say, if you had a beef with Goldberg back then, you should have spoke up about it. I don't remember one time um, Goldberg not defended himself or anybody saying, man, Goldberg, man, man, I just walk all over him. Uh, I don't remember anybody getting in into, you know, it, it, Goldberg's space and, you know, treating them in, in that nature. And for someone to get treated in that nature to throw dirt on a I, Goldberg's tough guy. Well, anybody that walk on the on, on the football field um, that can that can play on, on that gridiron um, with those guys. You are you are damn tough. Uh, whether you can beat somebody up in a fight or not, uh, that's another story. But are you going to uh, you know wimp out when it comes to confrontation? I don't think Goldberg is is that guy. Is Goldberg the greatest wrestler that ever put on a pair of boots? Perhaps not. But um, to hate on him because the comp the company is using Goldberg, hate hate on the company. Don't hate on Goldberg because. If you was Goldberg, you would do the exact same thing. You would come back and get the money. Did I say anything about his current run? No. No. Uh, I didn't. I don't uh, even care that he's still back. I don't even watch the f-ing show. You asked me a question, what I thought of him. I said, yeah, f- me up when I was there. And he's not very good. Go ask Bret Hart what kind of worker Goldberg is. Yeah. Uh, like... I mentioned um, your opinion on WWE bringing him back. It was more due to the fact Goldberg's age. I think he's 52, 53, and we no, mentioned no. he was a big it's star. The business is down. The day, they went to the Atlanta, Georgia. They, they tried to run the SmackDown in Atlanta. Atlanta, mm. Georgia, and they could only yeah. sell 1,500 tickets. They had to cancel the show. Atlanta, Georgia. Back in the 80s, when Ole Anderson had Georgia Championship Wrestling, they would sell 16,000 tickets a week. Yeah. Okay? Why are they bringing back Goldberg? Because he's an attraction. That's what happens when business is down. But he's, in my my point, I I don't want to watch the same old shit for the last 25 years. A four-minute match with the same moves. Yeah. Okay? That's what I'm saying as a guy in the business. Yeah, and as for Goldberg's run, we wasn't really burying that. We was actually burying WWE because we, in your words, they must be desperate, not Goldberg, WWE, because they can't produce new stars and they don't have trust in their talent. So that was your words, like they don't trust the stars they've got, so they have to bring Goldberg back. Yeah, just like they're probably begging to get the Brock Lesnar back. 
Yeah. Right? Because he's an attraction. That's why they don't see the reason why they use him sparingly, because if they use him every week, no one give a shit about him. They have yeah, to use him sparingly so they keep him an attraction. Yeah. And same Jeez. as uh, John Cena, they just brought him back now to feud with uh, Roman Reigns. Yeah. Yeah. He's um, an attraction. He's a draw because they spent 15 years pumping millions of dollars into him, giving him mm-hmm. countless amount of, of um, uh, airtime. Okay. And the, what Booker's like, here's a guy. Here, what, what are you diminishing my credibility? I had the balls to walk out of that company at 23 with nowhere to go. And I've managed to keep a good, uh, great living for the last 14 years doing what I do. And guess what? They tried to get me back. They had producers call my house. I had guys like Pat Patterson show up at my shows, book, okay, because they wanted me back. Because remember those tours of France that we did? Uh, you were on the later part, but those were sold out shows that in American currency were in the millions, book. And who was on top? Me. Don't try to diminish what I've done in this business. I'm not taking that shit from you or anybody else. Mm. Yeah, it's um, and we we have spoken like and yeah, I like I like Booker T, but oh, I like Booker they, T too. You like no, Booker no, T, no. I understand he's defending his friend, but no, 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 don't try to say. It's huh? safe to say he's really you know in deep with WWE now and no, yeah, he yeah. he's getting off. a weekly check. He's getting a weekly check, so he's got he's got a family to feed and he's got kids to put through college. That's great, and it probably. You know, send him there to try it. No, listen, I'm not gonna take shit from nobody that was in that locker room that I was in in 2004, because that was the worst locker room I've ever been a part of in almost 24 years in the business. I'm good yeah. where I'm at. The best in the world are in Japan. Book, you got a wrestling school? WrestleUniverse.com. Tell your students to to click on it and and subscribe so they can learn how to wrestle properly. There, I said it. To say this interview we done was only out for a couple of days, it seemed to have turned many, many heads. <laughs> no, listen, this, like I said, this started off as a side hustle. You yeah. know, so nobody mentions how everybody I put over in your interview. I know. <laughs> I say good things about everybody. I say good thing about Pat Patterson, Joe Doring, Rob Conway, Sly, even though me and him hate each other for years, now I'm praising him, and, you know. I didn't say anything bad about Vince, but the one thing that I say, being a truthful answer, and just, and all of a sudden I'm the bad guy, I don't see, I know one of the unwritten rules in wrestling that my father taught me is what you never knock anybody. Well, guess what? Every other rule in this business has been broken by the mainstream, so I'm going to break some more rules. WrestleUniverse.com, Pro Wrestling Noah. You guys want to watch the best in the world? You know, all your so-called American wrestlers who are supposed to be the best in the world, go watch who they copied. There. Yeah. Are we good? We're well, good. Right, okay. everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And yeah, uh, tune in next time. Yes, sir. Hey, it's James here. Hope you enjoyed that interview clip. I'm guessing you did because you are hearing my voice. So if you want to check out the full interview, click on the box on the left-hand side. If you want to subscribe to the channel, which will help me a lot, click on the box in the middle. And if you want to watch me other interview clips from interviews I've done previous, then click on the box on the right-hand side. So, thanks, and I'll catch you in the next one.